education is a powerful and essential tool for building a modern, knowledgeable and peaceful society. With that realization in mind, the government of Zimbabwe, through the Ministry of Higher and Tertiary Education, Innovation, Science and Technology Development, in 2018 revised Zimbabwe State University's traditional tripartite mission of teaching, research and community service to align to the urgent national ambition to attain a middle income status by 2030. It is now a requirement for all state institutions of higher learning not only to teach, research and serve the community, but to innovate and industrialize Zimbabwe. At Great Zimbabwe University, Education 5.0 has been fully embraced as the university has remodeled its programs and introduced new centers and schools whose collective mandate is to help the country achieve Vision 2030 targets and ambitions. Great Zimbabwe University has joined other national institutions in the quest to transform the economy of this country. And 5.0 has become emblematic of that quest and the vision to achieve a, a development. Let me just identify one or two examples. In food security, GZU has established the Chiri campus for drylands agriculture, where we are connecting with the members of the community in producing food in, in an area which normally would not be considered ideal for food production. We are doing this in order to make ourselves relevant to Zimbabwe's drive for self-reliance in the area of food production. Secondly, we are also aware that public health is critical. It is so important and hence we are in the process currently of establishing a medical school which will shortly be uh, uh, opened by His Excellency. We are also desirous of placing ourselves in the forefront of the NDS-1. And this is important because a university must be relevant to the needs of the country and to the needs of its people. We, we feel that we have an obligation to provide society with the necessary tools for achieving the kind of development that we are always talking about. How do we make our people part of this drive to achieve self-reliance? Drylands cover approximately 40% of the earth. Despite being characterized by water scarcity and limited ecological resources and services, they are important for many provisions and cultural services. However, Dryland productivity is affected by various factors that include climate change, increasing human populations, unsustainable production practices, and overconsumption. Great Zimbabwe University and its partners, with the support of uh, the government through the parent ministry of higher and tertiary education, innovation, science and technology development, have thought of establishing the Agro Innovations in Drylands program. The program has two pillars, the infrastructure pillar and the innovation, research and development pillar. In the infrastructure pillar, we are trying to establish infrastructure which is going to support the production or the innovations that can lead to increased production, processing or what we call value addition and also commercialization of products and services coming from drylands. 
we are also establishing this grain processing plant and other infrastructure under that side that will be in a position to value add products. The other pillar is there for us to promote, to increase production and promote value addition and commercialization of products that we get from drylands. Through the education, innovation, research and development pillar, six Doctor of Philosophy and ten Master of Philosophy students have since been enrolled into the Agro Innovations and Drylands program to help develop agricultural practices and technologies that make efficient use of locally available material resources, thereby reducing vulnerability to the impact of climate change and variability. We, what we have here is uh, co-composting. The, the whole idea behind this is to, to produce an organic uh, based fertilizer or orga, uh, organic based uh, manure with uh, improved soil moisture uh, retention as well as uh, improved nutrient supply. As we all know, uh, drillings uh, are prone to moisture stress. In drillings, we also have uh, soils with, uh, with poor fertility levels. So we aim to get a product which will supply enough nutrients to sustain the crop for growth, which will have uh, enhanced moisture retention to su uh, supply enough moisture, especially during mid-season droughts. As we all know, uh, given the, the changing climatic conditions, the, there is a erratic uh, supply of uh, moisture to the crop due to uh, uneven rainfall distribution. Here at ISEDA we have a poultry project that we are doing. Uh, we have 4,000 beds on ground. Each uh, poultry house will housing 1,000 beds. We have, we have 1,000 sasso chickens, 1,000 cuckoo beds, 1,000 bushveld and also black astrolog beds. We also have a hatchery that is uh, sited at Mashava Kambas. That way we will be hatching eggs from this site. We will have a contract growers creek scheme with the Chivi rural farmers where we will be giving them uh, indigenous chicks and also feed from the feed mill. And we will go back to the farmers and buy the uh, chickens from them and market from them, then deduct our cost of the chicks and our, also the feed cost for, that we have used when we give them the beds. This beekeeping project is an agro-innovation project that is started to support uh, communities on how to earn a very good livelihood, which is free from uh, labor, which is not too much expensive, which is affordable to uh, all of the people in, within the communities. So, with the Great Zimbabwe University, uh, we are aiming to support communities so that they will be able to work uh, with the natural resources, to create their own employment, to create jobs for others, and also support the 5.0 which have been started in Zimbabwe. We are also uh, encouraging communities to engage into beekeeping so that they will be able uh, to gain some incentives. This project is going to be an, an industry because we are going to produce a lot of uh, products emanating from honey, uh, honeybee products like wax, propolis and uh, honey. New and improved drought tolerant varieties will increase production of traditional crops in dryland farming systems. Now, sustainability of the agro innovations in dryland agriculture program uh, is dependent on a number of factors that include community engagement, reliability of the markets, acceptability of the innovations by the communities, uh, local availability of the raw materials, as well as uh, improved production. Now, if you take, for instance, community engagement, I'm happy to say that as yes, Grace Zimbabwe University, we adopted a bottom-top approach where we have been working with the farmers right from the initial phases of this program. Now, why that is important is that these uh, innovations that we are developing are innovations for farmers in the drylands, and these are the farmers that are supposed to use them. Now, researchers come and go, but the moment that they work with the farmers, co-creating solutions to the problems that they face, even when they leave, these farmers have been trained on how to use these technologies, and that is very, very important.
Great Zimbabwe University is indeed making sure that communities and drylands are well equipped to co-create solutions for problems affecting them. To this end, Master of Philosophy and Doctor of Philosophy students have been dispatched to communities in all the seven districts of Mashinga province so that they assist farmers to be self-reliant, uplift their living standards and produce food that is adequate to feed the nation. <laughs> ndiye kutsvaga kuti tigadzire mbeu dzemapfunde zvinoshingirira kubva kumatambudziko akasiyana siyana kunyanya nyanya kumatambudziko ari maringe nekushaikwa kwemvura munzvimbo yatingati drought pachirungu saka tikushanda nemarimi munzvimbo muprovince ine maswingo iko zvino turi munzvimbo yechisase tine varimi vedu vatakapa mbesa dzemapfunde dzavari kurima vachigutsikana nadzo kuti chivaluta pamwe chete kuti dzinoshinga zvakadi nekudamudziko re 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 drought so tinitarisirwe kuti vari mivedu vane mbesa dzavachasarudza kubva kubva kuma varieties akasiyana siyana atiri kushanda nawo pamwe chete ne Ecrisat vachizotibatsira kusarudza yavanowirira nayo inoshingirira kuzvirwere inoshingirira ku drought anonaka zvakare pakudya tazogadzira mbesa yedu vari mivano kwanisa kuzoitora hoirima eh nenye kutenda school credit zimbabwe university yakatirangarira na professor Eduardo Sogo so trimisa chirima cha mafunde takaona ma inputs edu akati kwani tikarima zvinofadza takarima mafunde akanaka tikaona gore edu akanaka vakomana ava vakabata basa guru ava gore rapera mwaka wadarika vachiti dzidzisa tikatevedzera vakati pa zvese ma fertilizer vakati pa mbeu vakati pa mishonga yekufirita zvikati tira zvakanaka samadzimai shuwatakabona kuti pana pa great zimbabwe university yavo yakuti simudzira kuri makwedo akuzikukungosha bedzi kwava kuri makwe business tichiwana mari dzokuti tava kuti nevana vedu tendisa kuzvikoro nyore kudla chai kwezve zvisadza risire namo taka tambira chichirongwa ichi chatakaunzwa ne Greece Zimbabwe gura pera 2021 muno muno October apo taka tambira chirongwa ichi taka chitambira e tese chiri vari mivano kwana kita vanomwe ere yakunoko taka faras kuti chivudzwa kuti pambe pakufamba ne 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 program yedi ichi muchange makwasa kugadzira chikafu chehuku imi pachenyu nokupfuya hukudza kuti imi pachenyu muchizvitengesera imi pachenyu market vakati inenge iripo izvi zvakatiraza kuti eh takusimukira isusu vanhu vanga vari pasi pasi kuno kumarowa ndiye zvikuru ina hangu ndino ndinoda kutenda vashandi ve Greece Zimbabwe University vanhu va iwo vari misi vedu nomoyo murefu nesu Similarly, farmers that have taken a leading role in seeking to transform their communities have been attracted by the Agro Innovations in Drylands program and have approached Great Zimbabwe University seeking for scientific and innovative ideas from the institution. We are so excited uh, with the evolving relationship between us and uh, the GZU uh, Center for Dryland uh, Agriculture. After our visit, uh, Dr. Shua and his team, including Dr. Faith Ruzengwe, visited us with some of their students. And to date, they have actually taken samples of the products that we produce here. And they're in the process of uh, analyzing them so that those can actually be uh, recognized and we know the, uh, the, the nutrition contents of those products. And, and, and that is going to add value because that will also help us to be SARS certified and uh, we'll be able then to convert this and even sell into uh, established uh, supermarkets. The, the research students especially those involved in uh, organic 
uh, manure or fertilizer manufacturing are working with us on that jetty composter and uh, that collaboration has started. We also have um, the, some of their students who we have uh, recommended for the Home for Humanity a course journey. So this re uh, relationship is actually scaled up. And to add on to this scaling up, this is precisely what we would like, the trajectory from self-sufficiency where we have been. Now we are molding and moving into the commercialization. And this whole setup together with GZU is going to bring in the industrialization. And the industrialization cannot happen without science and knowledge. We're going to be using both indigenous knowledge and exogenous knowledge and the science bit. And that cooperation and the collaboration has started and we are moving very fast. development of appropriate food technology and processing methods for traditional grains and other goods can lead to increased food security and nutrition in dryland areas. As part of the agri-innovations projects, one of the things that we are doing, we are looking into the traditional grains that are able to grow in drylands. So what we have done is after the production or after harvesting of our traditional grains, we are looking into processing them to do value addition. So one thing that we have done so far, we have looked into evaluating our, the existing technologies in terms of processing. So we went into the communities and, and understood how they have been traditionally processing the traditional grains. And from there, now we are processing them here at um, our GZHU Isita plant to get some of those. With me, I have formulate meal. We also have a variety of them. So what we did was we are using the winnowing, we are using the mortar and pestle, and we are also using the milling part. But from there, what we are looking into is uh, upscaling this, or the industrialization, where we need our engineers to now make um, big equipments for us that we can use for the processing. But the one thing that we want to maintain is the same quality that we can we are getting from the traditional processing ways. The construction of the Samon Mazorodze School of Medical and Health Sciences and the renovation of the Mashaba Teaching Hospital are all signs of a university that is keeping in touch with all aspirations of a modern nation. Uh, the Samon Mazorodze School of Medical and Health Sciences is anchored on um, heritage. And specifically, our thrust will be to uh, apply conventional med medical skills, just like any other university in the country or indeed globally. But uniquely, we plan to introduce profound appreciation of herbal medicines. Our intention and plan is to ensure we package the herbal medicines in an appropriate way which is um, acceptable to all classes of people. And specifically, before we even do that, we plan to authenticate, to validate the science behind the use of those medicines. 
Located at the Great Zimbabwe University campus in the Cloverly area of Mashingo, the landmark School of Medical and Health Sciences is expected to massively transform the healthcare system in Mashingo province and the region. Among other novelties, a center for the study of traditional medicines and indigenous knowledge systems will also be established at the school. Beginning of this year, we got a supplementary grant from the Vice Chancellor's office, which supported our students to develop some herbal formulations, some prototypes. So we, we have come up with an innovative way of uh, selecting priority plans for herbal product development. And this is what we have developed with our students, and I'm sure they are showcasing those ones at various the prototypes, they are still at their preliminary stage of development and once uh, now the students are getting into the lab to uh, validate the efficacy of those formulations and further improve them. So that's where we are so far. Of interest are the following products that are to do with management of high blood pressure, um, sexual function, management of COVID-19 and uh, management of skin disorders. So with me here is um, a range of products coming from capsules and these are the capsules here and I have got the teas and these are the teas here and I have got the syrups, the decoctions and the creams as well. So this range of products um, were developed by Agro Innovations in conjunction with the medical school. So these herbs with, which I have here are quite safe and um, they have got no side effects, but pending work is on the doses. The doses are still pending on what amount of dose is required for us to say they can manage a certain condition. The schools at Great Zimbabwe University feed into each other as a way of complementing disciplines within the university that aim to come up with education systems that provide answers to questions that have already been troubling our communities. Through the promotion of heritage-based innovations and the use of indigenous knowledge systems, Great Zimbabwe University is already mitigating impacts of climate change in dryland areas. Our Chibi Center for Innovation in Dryland Agriculture um, is anchored in our agricultural heritage that derives from the past. Um, when we talk about the agricultural heritage, we are looking at those aspects that we have inherited from the past, the different types of crops, the different kind of animals, and it is these um, past innovations that uh, our current initiatives in Chile are trying to improve. Um, if I may give examples of some of the major domesticates um, that were uh, domesticated in Africa, for example, like uh, the different sorghums and millets, all these are African indigenous um, crops that were domesticated by Africans and in fact agriculture itself uh, is one of the major innovations that did happen in the past. As Great Zimbabwe University gears itself to participate in an innovation and technology-led transformation of the country into a middle-income economy by 2030, the university established the Research and Innovation Directorate. The directorate is expected to harness the university's research and innovation efforts in order to bring solutions and interventions to the nation and the world's most challenging problems. Through the Great Zimbabwe Innovation Hub, we have been able to engage communities like when we look for raw products. One of the main projects that we are doing, because we are looking at the projects that address our own local problems and challenges. So we have a food processing uh, project, uh, and uh, what we do basically, we are doing value addition 
and the, you know, preservation and processing of uh, both indigenous and the exotic fruits. What we do is we engage communities so that uh, they are part and parcel of the value chain. Among those things, you know, we also benefit from community uh, indigenous knowledge as well as we also try to work together and also teach them the best practices. The university's innovation hub has since started the registration process for nine trademarks with the African Regional Intellectual Property Organization, ARIPO. The innovation hub in collaboration with the faculties is embarked on a food processing project where we aim to add value to locally sourced uh, raw materials. So we have managed to make working prototypes of uh, wines, juices, gems, coffees, spices, uh, even um, instant porridges. Uh, we have also gone to make uh, baked confectionaries. And also it's not always about food. We have managed to make skincare products and medicinal solutions. We are doing this in order to alleviate the pressure on the import budget and also to fully utilize uh, locally sourced material and thereby empowering our communities. For its achievements, the university has won several national, regional and international awards. Great Zimbabwe University is firmly on course to achieving its mission to contribute towards industrialization and modernization of society through heritage-based teaching, research and innovation.